here. Um, today I'd like to introduce you to a product known as diatomaceous earth stone mat. I will also refer to it as a DE stone for short. I'd like to propose um, that these DE stone mats could be used as a sustainable alternative to blotter paper in some paper, um, in some drying applications and paper conservations. Today, um, I will talk to you about uh, what diatomaceous stones are, how they're made, and the origin of the material. You will also see the results of analytical tests conducted at the U.S. National Archives Heritage Science Lab by Dr. Jennifer Herman. And I will also share with you how I use uh, these objects in treatment. Um, okay, I'm not sure how to do it. Sorry. All right. Got it. <laughs> so conservators are creative. Uh, all the objects here, even though they were not made for conservation, somehow are used by paper conservators. So will you be then surprised if a bath mat is added to the list? What you see on the right is a DE stone mat. DE stones are absorbent, smooth, dimensionally stable, rigid boards. They're also cost effective because they're reusable. And all these characteristics make them, in my opinion, um, you know, good drying surfaces. DE stones are marketed for home use, so um, in the United States you can buy them for kitchen or bathroom use. They're advertised as made of natural material without um, any additives. They dry instantly, they're safe, mold resistant. And so the purpose of this material characterization study was to verify some of these claims via scientific analysis. But before I get to it, let's start with some, a little more information about the product itself. So what is diatomaceous earth? Diatomaceous earth, also called diatomite, is the main component of DE stone mats. It is naturally occurring chalky sedimentary rock, rich in deposits of skeletal remains of diatoms. Well, you may ask, what are diatoms then? Um, those were first observed in 18th century. They're single-celled algae, widely distributed in uh, various aquatic habitats. They perform photosynthesis, so they're considered uh, plants. They also vary in size from 5 to 200 micrometers. And there's more or about 30,000 species out there. It's an estimation. And this micrograph sh uh, shows you the complex geometrical architecture of some of these organisms. And notice the multitude of pores in each diatom. The porosity uh, combined with complicated shapes uh, contributes to the high absorption uh, properties of this material. How are the DE stones made? So I have to preface this uh, with the fact that I've never seen it. This is something I found on the website of uh, one of man manufacturers. But um, I have a bit of a background in pottery, and it seems to me like it's a low-fire, bisking type of uh, material. But uh, basically, you mix water uh, with diatomaceous earth, quartz sand, uh, plant fiber for strength and bulk, and uh, the slurry is then molded and uh, layered about 20 times pounded and pressed, and then it's fired at 200 uh, degrees Celsius under pressure, dried some more to remove residual moisture, 
and then various shapes are cut and it's ready to be sold. The East Tones are sold under various brands and we actually tested two, but I'm not gonna uh, endorse anything or any company in, in particular. Uh, and these are formats that I particularly like um, in my studio. Um, they, um, especially the big stone, is, um, is quite useful because you can combine it into larger surfaces. Uh, the large stone weighs about three kilos, and it's 38 by 61 centimeters, 15 by 23 inches. Uh, coaster size, and I brought a couple of them, so after the talk, if you'd like to feel the material, you can come over and take a look. Coaster size uh, squares are useful for a pasting hinges, attachments, or um, mending strips. So here I wanted to, oh, sorry. Um, this is a close-up of a, a surface. Um, on the right, you see a photograph that I took uh, under the microscope, and um, it looks really rough, but actually when you, when you touch the actual thing, it's quite smooth. And besides, you always use um, holytex with it or nonwoven polyester as an interleaving layer. And here I wanted to also uh, briefly touch on uh, material that is already used in conservation. And it's somewhat similar to um, diatomaceous earth. Fuller's earth is used for poulticing. It has a similar elemental content, but different percentage of um, elements. So uh, also, there are some other differences. Um, the origin is different, um, structure, and characteristics and applications. And I just wanted to point that out because sometimes these two materials are uh, confused or used interchangeably. And moving on to the scientific part, these tones were characterized by XRF and FTIR spectroscopy. The chemical composition of the analyzed DE stones was consistent with known elements and compounds found in diatomaceous earth, so that was great. Um, and because there was no reason for concern based on the chemical composition, we went on to um, investigate whether uh, Wattman filter paper samples could be dried between these stones and then analyzed to see if there is transfer that happens, and also if there's any long-term effect, uh, impact on the paper that is dried between these stones. And here's the XRF spectra of the Wattman filter paper samples dried between the stones, along with a control. The control is in pink. Essentially, they're identical. So the you know, conclusion is no inorganic elements uh, moved from the stones to the paper. FTIR spectra of the paper samples, again, match the control. And the control is in red. Um, and similarly, the conclusion is no new organic substances were introduced into the Wattman filter paper. Gravimetry and the accelerated aging and colorimetry tests were also done to give an estimate on how the DE stones absorb water and also to see what long-term effect DE stones may have on paper dried against their surface. So on the left, you see three stacks of drying materials, wool felt, cotton blotter in the middle, and then those round coaster size the East Tones that I showed you before. Um, and the gravimetry analysis showed that the samples placed between the East Tones initially dried much more rapidly, so the intake of water was much more rapid than in comparison to um, 
blotter, and wool, wool felt. And I don't have the chart here showing that, but there is, there is one. Um, So after that, these paper, the same paper samples that we, we were just discussing were placed in an accelerated aging chamber and aged for four weeks at 70 degrees Celsius and 65% RH. The results of the accelerated aging test are shown in the graph in the bar chart on the right. So compare the data for the D stones, which is in the right column, and the blotter paper center and they both basically are similar. Um, there was no significant color change in the dried and aged paper when DE stones and blotter paper was used as drying material. Interestingly, the samples dried between wool felt, which is the bar on the left, exhibited more color change, approaching the delta E where a just noticeable change is observed, which is marked by the red line, that's where your eye is able to see the difference. And so, as in the other previous analytical tests presented, the accelerated aging test results indicate that using DE stones in conservation treatment should not have any adverse long-term effect on paper. Um, we also tested pH. The surface pH of the stones was measured with pH strips, and the range was 8.5 to 9. And TAPI pH cold extraction method was used to measure the pH of the paper samples dried between these stones and blotters before and after aging, and, and that's in the chart, in the table. As you can see, the measured pH for blotter dried and DE stone dried paper samples was, is quite close. This suggested that this suggests that uh, these stones have no negative influence on the paper pH. And here is a chart, is a table sort of comparing different characteristics for both blotter and DE stones. And I just wanted to uh, point out the fact that the stones absorb less water than blotter paper as compared to their weight, but it absorbs it faster as the gravimetry test uh, showed. Also, um, the cost is, um, for, for private conservators, I think that's a, that's a big plus because you can reuse them. So um, now let's move on to treatment. These stones can be used as a drying surface with non-woven polyester insulating layers, such as Holitex or Bondina or Tyvek. Um, they can also be used in conjunction with wool felts when a paper artifact has a plate mark or some other 3D quality. And that's what you see on the right is an etching and um, wool felt is used on top the image on the left is a lithograph, and the drying material is the stone top and bottom. These stones can also be used as an absorbing surface. So immediately after an immersion treatment, it is recommended to brush an object down over a layer of non-woven polyester to ensure a uniform contact. And you can also weigh it gently down with, um, with some felts, like so. And another idea is, and um, I tested it only once, um, when a treatment calls for a secondary support re which requires minimal moisture, a lining paper can also be pasted over a DE stone to remove as, as much water as possible. And in the top left corner, you can, you can see that um, mm, 
hinges or paper attachments can be pasted directly on the stone, but um, when you have a larger piece of paper, a sheet of lightweight, sort of open polyester, Holitex, um, is recommended as an insulating layer. The polyester will prevent the lining paper from sticking to the stone. So recap, um, advantages of, of this product. It's sustainable, it can be reused, so it's cost effective. Um, there are combined qualities of blotter paper and plexiglass in one. So you have absorbency, but it doesn't deform when it's, when it's in touch with wet object. It's rigid and it has some weight. And also I found uh, that I don't need to check, like with blotter paper, you need to go back and check um, and change the blotters. With this, I don't think I, there is need for that. Disadvantages. Um, smaller than blotter paper size. Rounded corners, so when you combine more than two slabs, when you want to make a much larger area, then you have that space in the middle that is empty. You can creatively fill it in with something that you can make out of smaller pieces like this, but it requires some work. And another, idea, and another thing is that it's a commercial product, so it can be discontinued, it can be changed without notice. Um, yeah, so conclusion. Analytical re results confirm that DE stones are composed of inert material. They're safe for paper and could be, sus could be used as a sustainable substitute uh, for bladder paper. No transfer from the East Stone to paper samples dried in contact with the East Stones um, was observed, as in the XRF and FTIR. Um, accelerated aging tests showed that drying of the East Stones does not affect color change and pH of the paper any more than drying with blotter wood. Drying absorption rate of the D-stone is greater initially than that of blotter paper or wool felt. So that may be a useful observation in, in terms of if you have an object that is uh, water sensitive. Interleaving with non-woven polyester sheet is always recommended. And of course, more research is needed because it's just a new, um, new idea. And uh, Jennifer and I would like to thank our colleagues for their support and advice and help. And I also would like to thank FAIC Foundation for Advancement in Conservation for their financial support. And you thought that I was done, but I'm not. Um, diatoms used to inspire art. And in Victorian art, uh, Victor Victorian times, um, uh, diatom arrangements were used as an art form, and this documentary, which is literally five minutes long, but very interesting, um, is called The Diatomist, and I encourage you to take a look. And I will leave you with this image, because diatoms still inspire art. And this is uh, an artist who works with fabrics. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. Do you hear me? Yeah. Thank you very much, Eva. It's very, very inspiring. Um, I'm sure I will buy a stone for my bathroom, and maybe it finds its way into my workshop. So um, are there any questions, please? Hello, um, here, yeah. uh, Constantina from Natural History Museum. Um, thank you, it was uh, fascinating. Uh, I was wondering whether also you have uh, uh, checked the stone, whether it has absorbed uh, anything from the paper, or when you 
use the adhesive, whether it has absorbed and the adhesive stayed in the stone, or whether you can wash the stone. Right, so when I paste um, on the stone, it stays on the, the paste stains um, are on the surface, and then I just take it under running water, and with a soft brush, I wash it off, let it dry, and it's clean. That's kind of how I use it. It's, it can be reused in, in that way. I know that um, I talked to somebody who is in the audience who already uses the stones. And um, maybe, Frank, maybe you would like to um, <laughs> share your um, experience. Um, yes, I have used them and I have four of them and I use them every day when I'm doing aqueous treatments or when I'm leaf casting. What's remarkable about, about them is, first of all, you can use both sides. Um, when you put a wet sheet of paper um, on the stone, the suction is instant. It's un if you put a wet piece of paper on blotter, <clears throat> it will take a while, but you put it on the stone and you literally can see the water soak into the stone instantly. And because of the large size of the stone, um, smaller pieces of paper can be laid out on it, but you will notice that the stone will go from white to slightly gray when it's wet. Just turn the stone over, you've got the other surface to use as soaking and it will dry within minutes. So you can keep flipping the stone over and over and it continually soaks up. Um, when I'm leaf casting, I've done 50 sheets in one day and the four plates worked. Um, when I cast, I'll put it on the stone. It'll suck out the majority of the first amount of moisture out of the paper at which time I then take it to the suction table and can put it on a blotter. And the blotter doesn't get as saturated um, as I used to have to change it um, because it be would become saturated. The stones are just remarkable. Um, one thing to note, though, is if you use them after washing a sheet, um, if there's any residual coloration some of that yellowing of the paper will stain the stone. And I've done some washing, but uh, it's not significant. And I've been using them now. When did you give AIC? Was it February? Um, May. May? I've been using poster. them literally every day since May. And they're remarkable. And they dry quickly and can be used over and over and over again. So I. I didn't notice a lot of staining, but I only use them for drying, and I try to keep them always um, clean and always with the Holitex. Um, so maybe maybe that's why I didn't get any staining yet, but um, yeah, that's something to think about. It seems a remarkable thing. I've never seen it in Europe. Is there anybody in the room who can, has seen this kind of things in Europe? Because it's, to me, it seems an American thing. <laughs> you know, I try to, because um, you can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it on, you can Google it and different companies offer it. Um, and I try to send it to somebody who lives in Europe and for some reason, it. I, w I could not deliver it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe there are some local companies that um, you can we try, search. Which, next, to, if, if, next to me, uh, Avka tries to Google it. We cannot find it in Europe. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 In Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you didn't want it. You didn't want to mention the manufacturer's name, but there is, um, was it, is it Duval or something that, uh, the name of one of the manufacturers of the big plates? Do you remember? There is a lot of companies. I'm not going to mention any names, but okay. there is a lot of companies. If you Google diatomaceous earth stones or mats, um, 
a lot of them will pop up in your feed. And I thought that, they, that the stones were available in Europe because when I was um, looking at the advertising of some of the pr manufacturers or distributors in the US, they mentioned um, per, some kind of permission or health certificates from Europe. So I assume that it's also available um, here. What is the price? Uh, yeah, so the prices um, really vary on the company. Um, the cheapest ones are $30 per the big stone, which was what, 60 by, I, I forget the, 25, uh, tw uh, 23 inches by 15 inches. Um, but depending on the company, they can go up to $90 per stone. So it, you kind of, have to, and there's more and more companies selling it in the U.S., so they're becoming more available, more affordable and cheaper. Now, maybe this is also a task for the conservation supply companies that they find a solution for it in Europe. I just found it on Amazon. You can um, buy these things on Amazon. It is 26 euros something. Yeah. And you can buy it in Germany as well. <laughs> oh. Could, yeah. oh. Just for clarification, it's Kieselgore in German. So if you Google Kieselgore, then you find this on Amazon. I have a quick question. Actually, it's not quick. Hi. I'm here. I'm in the back. Sorry. Fena Engeke, uh, MFA Boston. Um, I think because I've used diatomaceous earth for poulticing before, my initial thoughts are about solvents, and this might be outside the realm of your research, but I'm wondering about um, if something is coming out of the paper into the stone, if the stone holds on to it, because I know that's, I always end up having to throw away my poultice uh, material afterwards, and so I think that would be my first uh, thought, is, oh, if I did a treatment and I'm using this stone, is it possible for any uh, degradation materials or solvents that may still be there to migrate into the stone and stay there? And also, do they break easily? That was the other one. Uh, they, they don't break easily unless you like throw them on the ground, but they, they're not easily chippable or, you know, unless you take a knife and jab at it, um, it's, it's pretty sturdy. Um, I did an experiment where I um, had paper with adhesive uh, residue and I tried to see if maybe with organic solvent I could, um, it could absorb some of it. Um, and then I looked at it under the UV and I saw some residue in, on the stone, but it wasn't a lot. So some of it goes into the stone, but I, I, I don't use it for that purpose. Thank but, you. But that's an idea. No further questions. So, so thank you very much. Eva, no, I so, sorry, there's one. Hi, Benjamin Kishner. I just want to add like another very useful tool is it to incorporate into a humidification chamber as the base layer, just fill up like a sink to, and then put it into uh, the sink and then have a, the object resting on the surface. sort of like a blotter, you, you saturate it with water and you rest something on it? No, actually I fill up the, um, the tray to half the height of the stone and then put my object on top of the dry surface and let the, like, yeah, the, uh, to, to uh, have the humidification happening with a uh, acrylic on top. So it's just like a blotter or a screen or because I don't have access to these kind of like egg crates that the US conservators like to use. So I found that was very helpful. <laughs>